Section 6.5, homework problem number 3. This section interprets the division of fractions in a different way. So the question asks is always how many units in one group. So uh, units is going to be one thing, like measuring units uh, or some kind of objects. And group uh, will be the other thing, either like servings or cups or one recipe. Okay, so you just have to pick and two things for uh, you, one for a unit, one for a group. So in our in my example, we have six divided by three quarters equals what? And so notice that we have to make sure the question is the asks for the number of units in one group. So which means this number has to be number of groups. Again, the dividend is always the total number of units, total number of units. So we need to pick one thing for unit, one thing for group. So there are many ways, many different things we can, uh, different word, word problems we can come up with. For example, I could say, again, the question is, um, how many of some kind of units in uh, per something or in one thing? So for example, I could say, and the number of cups uh, in one um, serving. So that could be the question asking for, or number of cups in one recipe or one batch of recipe. And like we did uh, in pr the previous section. Um, and which means uh, if we pick, make the group, group pick um, serving for the group, so this will be the serving and the units will be the cups. So if I do the first case, this will be the serving, this number six will be the cups. But if you do the batch, uh, batch of cookies, so this will be the batches and, and then um, cups. So um, the question, I can come up with two water problems. For example, um, I have uh, six cups of something and, and um, which uh, are only three quarters of a serving. So the question says, so, so we have six cups of something, but that's only three quarter of a serving, of a serving. It's not even enough for one serving. So the question is, how many cups are going to be in one serving? So that's one kind of question we can come up with. Or you could change this to the recipe type of question, say uh, six cups of oil can make three quarter of a, a recipe. And so how many cups do we need for one recipe, uh, one batch of cookie? So that's um, two type of question we can come up with. So here I did something a little different because the first number is a whole number. And so these two examples that I just gave can be applied to any division of fractions. And actually because cups could be, oops, so the cups can be a fraction so we can have so even the first number is not a whole number these two problems will still work so you could have like a maybe a half cup of something so the first number doesn't have to be a whole number and the serving of course can be a fraction but since this case is special the first number actually the total number of units actually is a whole number so i can pick cookies because usually uh, if you have a fraction in this place you don't really want to say i have a half cookie and that's um, a cookie is usually not very easy to cut but pizzas maybe um, so since I have a whole number I decided to do something different so I picked I picked the I make units actually cookies so units could be objects sometimes we also say objects so we I have six cookies and the group actually I'm gonna say a cup so a group means a cup so let's see, uh, going back here, the group will be cup, cups, and then um, units will be cookies. So this is another example. So here we have like three different examples. And of course, in the homework, you just need to give one. So this is the one I came up with. Now if you uh, see six means, here six means six cookies. So let's say um, to make six cookies, and then this is uh, the cup of flowers. So we need, a, three quarter cup of flowers. So the question, how 
many cookies. So this is the number of units or number of cookies in my case in one cup. So here will be the question. So how many cookies can you make? Uh, in the definition, in general case, we just say number of units in one group. But uh, to make this word problem um, to fit our real life situation, you could say how many cookies can you make with one cup? So again, three quarter cup can make six cookies. And if you have one cup, how many cookies can we make? So that's the um, question. And now let's look at, uh, so first we got the word problem. Now we're going to try to solve it by a math drawing or a table or double number line. So I actually did the two methods here. Um, and you, again, you only need to do one of these. So the, um, let me move this a little bit here. So if you see right here, um, we set it up. Three quarter cup corresponds to six cookies. And the question is, uh, how many cookies? So this should be a question mark at the beginning. Uh, it corresponds to one cup. So we need to figure out how we get, for, go from, uh, sorry here, three quarter. We need to focus on the side with both known numbers because the right side, we don't know how many cookies. So you're going to try to figure out how do we get one cup from three, uh, three quarter. And so what we do, again, it's not very easy to see that relationship because it involves fractions. So what we're going to do is first we're going to turn three quarter to a whole number by multiplying four. We use the same strategy in the previous section. So after we multiply a fraction three quarter by four, so again, three quarter times four means four over one, they cancel each other. So we just get three, um, three, three cups. And similarly, we're going to do correspondingly, we have to do the same operation. We multiply six cookies by four. So what this line means, if three quarter cup make, can make six cookies, three cups can make 24 cookies, which makes sense. If you quadruple the, the cup of flowers, of course, the quantity of cookies will be also quadrupled. And then because we need, we actually don't have three cups, we only have one cup. So what we're going to do is going to divide three by three. That's going to give us one cup. And of course, if we uh, cut the number of uh, the cups of flour by one third, then then the quantity of cookies will also be cut by one third. So we do 23 divide, 24 divided by three, that gives us that eight. So that's how we got that eight there. So this is how we use a, a table to, um, to solve this type of question. Now you could also uh, solve it by the drawing. So if you do the drawing method, you first draw this is uh, one cup and three uh, all the way here. So that's one cup dividing into four equal parts. And three of these will be, um, we're going to uh, shade three parts. So that's three quarter cup. And three quarter cup corresponds to six cookies. And then um, that means. So you can see three parts make six cookies. So that means each part can make two cookies, two and two and two. And if you have one more cup, one one more part, of course, you can also make two cookies. And so together, you can see the entire four parts can make two, four, six, eight cookies. So you can do six divided by three. That's two cookies each part. Each part actually means one fourth. This is one fourth cup. And each one fourth cup can make two cookies, two cookies. So if you have one more, uh, one quarter cup, it's going to make you another two cookies. So together that's six cookies. Two times four gives us eight cookies. All right. And also they want us to explain why it makes sense to solve this by inverting and multiplying that's what we talked about before when we divide fractions we actually can keep the first first number of fraction and change the division to multiplication so we're going to change this to multiplication and then invert invert means flip the fraction to four thirds here so the answer, and then we multiply straight across to get 24 divided by 3, which gives us 8. So the same answer. So this is how the division rule of fractions. But how do we see that from here? As you can see, the 
for if you use the table method, and so you can see right from here, we first take, we started from this number three quarters, and then we we did two operations to turn three quarters to one. The two operations we did were first operation one multiply by four and then divide by three. So this is um, the first operation we did, operation one, and then we also did operation two. And notice in the drawing method, we also did two operations, that is divide by three and then times four which are pretty much the same, although the order is different, and we did the same two operations, times four divided by three or divided by three times four. And But if we combine these two operations together, so we times three and then divide by four, and literally if you put them together, uh, that's exactly times three quarters. So similarly, when you look at how we get the answer eight from six, so we start from six, we also did the same operations, operation one, and operation two. Uh, if we combine these two operations together, times four divided by three, times four divided by three. So we started with six and times it by four and divide by three. And so that's um, exactly uh, what we were saying and uh, called mod multiplying, uh, inverting and multiplying. So this is inverting and this is multiplying. So when we um, from the two, these two methods, we can see that um, when we divide fractions, uh, yes, we can do multiple steps, times, divide, but it can be combined into a single step, which is changing division to multiplication, and then invert, which is flip the second fraction from three-fourths to four-thirds. And also, if you see right here, we did divide by three, and then times four, but dividing by three literally means times one third. And then you multiply by another four. So together one third times four, that is also equivalent to times three quarters. So either way you can see uh, the two operations can be combined is equivalent, are equivalent to times four thirds. So that explains why the rule works, inverting and multiplying.